Alright, so I am sitting down and it's blowing my mind with one of my favorite board game designers of all time, Ted Osbach, the designer behind Suburbia, Subdivision, um, uh, Castle of Mad King Ludwig, uh, One Night Ultimate Werewolf, and fantastic games. So thanks for taking a minute to sit with uh, us. Certainly. It's just super, super cool. Um, we're sitting, by the way, because he's a giant, and I was incredibly intimidated. Um, I guess there's there's one simple question uh, I would ask you as a designer of fantastic games. What are your favorite games? My favorite games? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's okay. So this is this is really funny. I used to listen to uh, this uh, podcast that Aldi from Working Geek did a long uh -huh. time ago with uh, Dirk, the guy who started the site with him called Geekspeak. And this is like maybe ten years ago. And he would interview game designers. And it was really funny. I always thought it was interesting listening. They would ask that similar questions, right? And a lot of them had trouble with that because they're busy doing their own games. Sure, sure. that's stupid. <laughs> and now I'm in that very same position yep. because I don't have enough time to play the latest games because I'm busy working on these. So I have some that I really, really like, but they tend to be more obscure, or weird things like uh, like the Geist Blood series. If you've heard of that, I, I know the name. But I don't yeah, know the name. there's a, it's a series of dexterity games. Mm -hmm. It's basically people flipping cards. You see the objects on there, and the one that's missing you have to grab, right, grab or it, right. one that's the right color you have to grab, whatever. And so there's a series of people that love those things. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I've always been a big fan of Teach You. Oh, sure. uh, quite a bit. Uh, in terms of the more the larger board games, mm -hmm. then there's uh, like El Grande and there's those sorts of games I really, really like. I don't get to play those enough just and they take up extra time. Um, and I've only played probably maybe 15 of the Essen releases. Okay. Um, you know, and there's so many. And uh, like Deus is one of the ones that I played there that I really enjoyed for Essen. Um, I was in, I had it in my hand and someone else bought it right out from under me. You know, it's the, the art is kind of weird. It's mm -hmm. it cause you a little like, oh, what's going on there? But if you get past the art, yeah, I we, think we it's a really interesting game. It. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's kind of neat. So, um, yeah, other than that, it's really hard to say. I have to say that basically a lot of stuff I'm playing Dusty. One thing I'm playing Dusty right now, which I can't talk about, which is really sad, okay. it's probably my favorite thing in the world. Oh. I'm so excited about playing Dusty, and I can't talk about it because I can announce it until later on. This year. Fair enough. Fair um, enough. But, you know, one thing I say is a one night series for me that has been as we're testing it. You know, I I love playing the game, testing it, designing it. That has been just this amazing treat because it's so rare to to come away from a session, even when you realize stuff doesn't work, mm -hmm. unhappy. You don't come oh, away from yeah, a session yeah. going, uh, well, we gotta fix this and this isn't working. No, it's more like, okay, we gotta fix this. Good this time working, all around. But it's fun and you had a great time and that's that's really exciting. That's I'm a very, very lucky person to be able to, to test those games as many times as I had, and mm -hmm. that's part of my job. So that's really cool. <laughs> super cool. Um, I'm lucky because part of my job is talking to you. Uh, but about the One Night series, I mean, uh, the werewolf formula, it, it's built on top of a, a really old game. I mean, it, 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 iterations of it have been around forever. I, I try explaining werewolf to someone, and they're like, is this mafia? And it's like, yeah, it is, sort of. And, you know, it goes back. Uh, what, was the, what was it that made you sit down and think, like, how do we distill this even further? So, so for the case of One Night, I mean, this is a, a co-designer, like I yeah. said, the, the co-designer actually did the original One Night Werewolf, mm -hmm. World, One Night Werewolf, which is really, really basic, but it had the, that idea that there were a couple cards in the center nobody did, mm -hmm. and that there's the possibility of a role being switched. Right. And those two things made it suddenly very, very, very interesting, whereas before traditional werewolf games, resistance to werewolf, um, you have... It's a known quantity how many werewolves are, how many villages there are, how many special characters, and it's up to you to suss that out. This through that extra dimension of hey, there's some cards that nobody has, which I still kind of would like to know what those are. Because right, they can right, right. Again. As well as I may not be the same role I started with. And that whole I'm not the same role I started with. Uh, when we played that original game, I was like, this is very interesting. But at the same time, I'm like, oh, I wish there were more. No, you know, and that's, there was no trouble anywhere at that time. There was right. no way to share the other characters through that. And, that and, you know, when the Robert came up, that was an awesome game. When it did, it was a win. It was our win. Um, so that's, that was the thing, I think, for me, is a couple of games playing an original one with the Robert and realizing, wow, there's really something here. There's something here about just switching the cards. And then we all, as a group, have this information. It may not even be just the bad guys that are mine. The good guys yeah, might want to line to get the bad guys to say something that will help them because their heart is or something. 
that suddenly that was like such this, this light went on and like, aha, this is fun, this is really, really engaging. And we started developing that, um, you know, for one night we ended up with this set of basic characters for one night. We had extra ones left over that some of them ended up being very great. And of course, as we've been iterating, we've learned we'll doing, you know, um, continuing the series uh, over time because we have some other things we're going to add that are funny. Like, oh, I'm so excited about uh, it. I can't talk about yet. Us too. Excited, uh, <laughs> I mean, the, the fact is that uh, it's like, a, you know, as I said to you before, it, it, we, we started Game Austin because we were just like tremendous fans of board gaming, we got into it, and uh, it's, it's defined our leisure time ever since we started. Uh, and I have to say, uh, when I first played Suburbia, um, it was a game with the four of us, and it was a game where all four of us are different kinds of gamers, and it appealed to us in different ways. You know, the, 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 my, my wife is a builder, she's an energy builder, that's like what appeals to her. We have a, a, another friend, her, her passion is, is about the expansion of a set, and creating this, this mosaic. Uh, I, my buddy is uh, you know, he's a very hardcore, like, sees the path to victory very, very clear and, and very, uh, very engaged. Uh, not a power gamer, but he's definitely, he knows how to win. And I live in the middle of somewhere between all of these states. And we sat down and we played, we played Suburbia and it, it spoke to all of us in a completely different way. And, uh, and when we heard about Five Star, we, I mean, and the rest of the internet, we I just lost it. Um, <laughs> what would you say your favorite thing is that's that's coming in five star? Um, the, the variable turn order, um, which initially doesn't seem like much because it only changes once per round. After everyone goes, you reevaluate turn order, and that by itself is this thing of you can actually go from last place to first place depending on the tile pieces. And investment markers now work on these new tiles which have stars on them. The stars are what takes you ahead on the turn order track, which is the star track and those other things too. Uh, so even if there's no star tiles available, you can invest in a tile that you have already in your city that has stars in it. Like maybe a tile that has two or more stars and jump ahead of other people. And totally change the game that way because someone else could be thinking, you know, all right, I see something at the end here, I can afford it now, but you know what, no one, neither can anyone else. And it actually works its way down, and you realize that, okay, I'm going last, I, I can't get first. it right now, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this, it'll flip it around, and now suddenly I get to go first next turn, I get that too. Um, that's so super cool. That sort of thing, it's, it's one of those subtle things that you realize after playing with very little turn or while this curve, you didn't realize before. Um, that's so, um, I mean, there's a lot of things I like about it, but probably the fact that the turn can change, and you're never quite sure when it will, and you kind of have to think about those potential strategies on the fly. Awesome. Yeah. The, I mean, I, I could talk to your off all day. And, and just, I could gush. Because, <laughs> uh, like I said, I'm a fan. Um, but uh, Castle of Mad King Ludwig, when I saw it, I knew it was special, like, it, on, on site. That was something that, that, something about the spatial element, you still have the piece drafting. Um, is, is it, is it going to grow, or is that a complete experience as far as you're concerned? There's definitely been an expansion coming out from yet. Uh, we'll probably be in that sometime. Uh, but we'll have one for now. Uh, but we're definitely going to expand that, because there are places we want to go with that that we couldn't in the original set. Uh, it just makes sense for kind of a base game to have. Fantastic. I mean, I don't know of any other game that has a buttery, and that's a special group. I, mean, that, that's, I want a buttery in my home. So here's the thing. When I found out about a buttery, the first thing I thought was that that was a place to store butter. Right. It's not. Logically. It's a place to store wine. And I actually don't drink wine, so I was a little upset about that. So now we have a larder in there, too. That's a place to store butter. Right. So I, I still got my place to store butter either way. Although, uh, it's kind of cool. That's super sweet. Um, like, I, I could... I'm going to have to stop myself because I could just go on forever and eventually <laughs> that camera's going to run out of juice. But thank you so much hey, for taking a minute to talk me. and yeah. thank you for your games. Oh, they, are, I, they are some I of the most wonderful that, that I are enjoying own. themselves playing and that's, that's awesome. That, that makes me happy. So. Well, uh, my con's been made, so uh, well, we're going to sign off here. Thanks, guys. Uh,